I'd like to show you what happens when we copy vector content from Illustrator and paste it into Photoshop. So here inside of Illustrator, we have a graphic. I got this graphic from this link just down here, and I've spread all the information out over multiple layers, which I'll unlock just now. So you can see the leaves are spread across four layers and the tree trunk is spread across two layers. So we'll see how much of that layer content comes through into Photoshop when we start copying and pasting. And then over here in Photoshop, we essentially have ourselves a blank document. Yes, there's some uh, folders which I've set up ahead of time, but there's actually no content within this file. So let's jump back into Illustrator. I've unlocked all of our layers. Let's copy all that information to the clipboard with a command or control C. Jump back into Photoshop and let's paste that with the command or control V. Okay, so this is the dialog box we get and I'm going to systematically work our way through all of our options just here, but I'm actually going to leave Smart Object till the very end. Let's start with Pixels and just choose OK. So we're still in this dynamic mode just here where we could actually uh, happily resize this object. But uh, once we're happy with the size, we basically just press enter on the keyboard or this little tick mark just up here. And when we do, it will actually commit what was vector content to a pixel based layer. So that's what this is just up here. I'll just drag it into our little pixels group just here. And just to prove that this is uh, raster content, this is pixels, if I go and press E to bring up the eraser tool, if I just drag that right through here, you can see I'm actually deleting pixels. And if I turn off the background, you can see I have actually deleted those pixels and taken them all, way, all the way to transparency. Now you wouldn't necessarily do that of course, but I'm just doing that to remind you this is uh, pasting as pixels, so you need to be careful not to damage those pixels. You may throw it into a smart object at a later stage, but that's what pasting as pixels are. Okay, let's press uh, Command or Control V again to paste, and this time let's choose Path. Choose OK, and have a look down at our Paths panel just here. Actually, let me just turn off that pixel content from earlier. So what's happened is when we've pasted as Paths, no big surprises, all of those paths have come in into the paths panel. First thing you want to do is note that this is a work path, which is actually a volatile situation to be in. If we start drawing vectors at a later stage, we will lose this information. So the best thing to do when you have a work path that you want to keep, just double click on it, give it a name, choose OK. And now all these vector paths are stored inside of this Photoshop file. So if we save, close and reopen this file, all of these good vector paths will be there. So how can we take advantage of that? Well, I'm not going to grab our selection tool. I'm going to press A and make sure we're using the um, path selection tool just here. And let's say, for example, I want to create a trunk here inside of Photoshop. So I can go and select that outer trunk just there, and I'll copy that to the clipboard just now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pasting paths. You need to be very careful when you do this because you can start inadvertently masking things. So when you're copying and pasting our parts, guys, my big recommendation is within the layers panel and the parts panel itself, just click in a blank area just to make sure that nothing's selected. So you're not going to be accidentally creating those uh, vector, vector masks. So now if I paste, you can see it's created a new work path, which is actually just that trunk just there. So now from the bottom of the layers panel, if I were to come here and create, say, a new solid color layer, give that a brownish color and choose OK, it's now taken our path and turned it into a vector mask on this colored layer just here. And let's actually drag that down to the um, path section just there. Um, really, let's uh, hammer the point home, guys. So I'll come back to our path panel just here. And maybe I'm wanting to grab those leaves just now. So I'm going to select those, copy them to the clipboard. Again, making sure nothing's selected. And then let's just choose um, paste. So we've now created another work path. Again, like before, I will just create a new solid color. Let's make that green. And there we go. Now, what's also great, guys, is all this, uh, all these paths are still vector paths. So if I zoom in nice and tight just here, and if I say select the uh, trees just here, and if I go and say grab the direct selection tool, you can see I am still free to edit those paths at will. I'll just edit, excuse me, I'll just undo that like so. Okay, and I'll just drag that back down to the path section just there. Okay, guys, so we've seen how to do the uh, pixel paste. 
and the path paste, let's have a look at the next one. Now I've been copying and pasting, so let's go back to Illustrator. All that's already selected, so I'll just copy that. Back inside of Photoshop, let's make sure nothing is selected. And let's paste. Okay, let's choose shape layer just here. Now I should point out, pasting as path and shape layer, extremely similar. Shape layer is also going to bring all these vector paths into Photoshop. But when we paste it as a path earlier, all those paths went straight into the paths panel. This time when we paste as a shape layer, all those vector paths are going to come in directly as a vector mask on a shape layer. So let's choose shape layer, choose OK, and I'll just drag that down to the shape layer section just here. Now what's happened is it's created a shape layer. It's just come in by default as my foreground color, which happens to be black. And again, there's all of our cool vector parts. Now we're free to change those at will. I can also change the color of this shape layer very easily. For example, I could just double click on that. We can make it, actually let's go with, um, yeah, we'll go something brownish for the trunk. And then I'll show you how we can easily pull the leaves out of here. So uh, again, this is all vector information guys. So we want to be using our vector tools. So if I grab the path selection tool, I want to select all of the leaves. So it's probably easiest if I just select everything. So notice I had shape one selected. I selected everything. I'll hold down the shift key and drag over the trunk, which deselects the trunk. So now I'm left with just the leaves. And a cool little trick, having selected the paths that we basically want to cut to a new layer. If I just come, under, come up under layer, new shape layer via cut, it looks the same just out here, but all of those leaves have been uh, jumped up to a new layer just here. So if I just double click on that layer and go and change them to say a green color, choose OK. Fantastic. And again, like before guys, all those uh, vector parts are still retained, so we can easily edit them, choose different ones, cut and or copy them to different layers as well. Okay, so that's uh, pasting as a shape layer. Let's go and look at our last option in two different parts. So here inside of Illustrator, copy all of those, back inside of Photoshop, and let's paste. So let's now look at this last option just here, Smart Object. So I'm going to demonstrate this, and then I'll return to this in just a second and show you the, uh, the library option just down here. So notice this is turned off. We're pasting as a Smart Object. Let's choose OK. And again, I'm free to resize this just now. And let's hit that tick mark to bring that in. And there it is just there, Vector Smart Object. I'll just bring that down to the Smart Object section there and just turn off the visibility of everything else. Okay, so this is the thing here, guys, that we just pasted just now. It's coming as Vector Smart Object. And you can see this little icon just here telling us that this is an embedded Smart Object. And just to prove that point, you can see up here in the Properties panel, Embedded Smart Object. So what does that mean? Well, what it's effectively done is embedded all of that Illustrator content inside of Photoshop, effectively as its own little Illustrator file. So if I double click the thumbnail, it opens me up here inside of Illustrator. Now notice the title of this file, Vector Smart Object, and notice just over here, this is my original tree file just here. This is where I've been copying from this whole time. But this second file that we've just opened up, this is the contents of that smart object from our Photoshop file. So I am free to make any change we like. So let's do something dumb, uh, very obvious. So I'll select this and change the color to be say bright red. Now I'm going to save this and close this. And let's jump back into Photoshop and see what's happened. So this smart object has been updated. And just to reiterate the point guys, this is embedded within the Photoshop file, okay? It's a copy of everything we took from the Illustrator file, but it's not pointing directly to that Illustrator file. Making this change to the red leaves just up here, which you can see in the thumbnail just here, back inside of Illustrator, notice our original file is completely untouched. Very nice. Okay, so um, that was pasting as a smart object. Now let's talk about the, uh, the library option just there. So I'm gonna draw your attention to the libraries panel just here. I'll point out that we do have an active library called Demo. And let's come back into Illustrator, copy everything back inside of Photoshop. Let's turn off Smart Objects so you can see we have nothing visible just now. Let's paste one last time. So let's paste as a Smart Object and choose this option just here, Add to my current library, choose OK. 
Again, we can resize. Let's just commit this, guys. And I'll drag this down to Smart Object, add to my current library. Now, this indeed has come in as a Smart Object, much like it did before. But notice the icon is different. This time there's a little cloud icon just there, which is telling us that it is now a Smart Object that lives inside of a library within the cloud. So this is no longer embedded within the file. This belongs to a library in the cloud. OK, now here is that library that I was talking about a few moments ago. It's called Demo. And you can see that smart object just down here lives inside of this library. Actually, just to prove the point, I'll jump into uh, Illustrator just here. And there's my libraries panel inside of Illustrator. You can see that file has actually opened up excuse me, it's being added to the library and it's immediately showing up inside of Illustrator as well. So back inside of Photoshop, if we were to double click on that thumbnail, we are now opened back up inside of Illustrator and we are actually editing this smart object within the library. So let's again do something dumb. I'll choose this little group of uh, leaves just here and let's change that to something very obvious like a bright blue. Now I'm gonna save it just now now, as soon as I do, notice that the library item has updated here inside of our library. Come back inside of Photoshop. We can see, again, the uh, item is updated inside of the library immediately in Photoshop as well. And we can see that out here in our document, that has also been updated. And we can see that in our thumbnail just down here as well. So I think that's pretty much everything there, guys. So that's uh, copying from Illustrator and pasting into Photoshop. I hope that helps. Catch you later.